Welcome to DoTween, an extreme explaining tutorial. DoTween is an asset that you can use in Unity to make tween animations, like moving, scaling, rotating, fading, and similar. DoTween is not the only tweening asset in the asset store. iTween and LeanTween are two other assets with similar functionality. Here are some comments from the reviews that users have left iTween seems to be very slow, and I didn't want that. LeanTween seems not to be supported any longer, so it was not an alternative. That left me with DoTween, which is free, fast, but the documentation is somewhat confusing. But I could live with that. Let's take a look at the anatomy of a tween. A tween is an animation that DoTween can generate. A tween consists of a component, an action, a value, and a duration. The component is often a component of a game object, like transform, sprite renderer, rigid body, material, and so on. Action is specific to do tween. Things like do move, do fade, do rotate, do scale, and similar. A value is often a number, but could also be a pair of numbers, like here, new vector 2, 2010, or a triple of numbers like here, new vector 3, 0, 0, 90. The duration is a single number, representing the duration in seconds. The value we specify in our tween is a true value. Observe that an animation is performed from the current value to the value specified in the tween. Here are some examples of simple tweens. The component in this case is transform, the action is do move x, the value is 40 and the duration is 1 second. So this animation will move the game object in the x direction. Here is another example. The component is sprite renderer, the action is do fade, the value is 0, and the duration is 1 second. So this animation will fade out the game object in 1 second. Here is another example. The component is transform, the action is do rotate, the value is a triple, 0, 0, 180, and the duration is 2 seconds. This animation will rotate the game object. 180 degrees around the z-axis. There is something called chaining in DoTween. That is when you have an animation like here. You can add on one or more specifiers. For instance, to this animation we add on a specifier called onComplete and we provide the name of a function to call. So when this animation is done my callback function will be called. Here is another example with two add-ons. The first says that we should perform our movement in a smooth way using the setEase specifier, and the other is a callback to a function that will be called after the animation is done. There is a way to combine simple animations into more complex ones. That is done with sequencing. What we do is to declare a sequence, and then we append animations or we join animations. Append means to run animations in sequence, while join means to run them in parallel. Here is one example. We declare a sequence, then we append a move animation, and then we append a fade animation. What this will do is that the move animation will be performed first, and after that is done, then the fade animation will be performed. There is an important issue having to do with the timescale. When the game is over, programmers will often set timescale to zero. But that will prevent any do tween animations from working, unless you override it. And you can override it by adding the specifier set update to true, like here. This animation will not work when the timescale is zero, but if you add on setUpdateTrue, 
then it will not care that the time scale is zero. Let's look at a simple example. Here we have a game over image. At the start of the game, we want this image to be invisible. But when the game is over, we want to fade in the image during two seconds. How would we do that with DoTwin? Here is the code. Observe that we must have a using statement. Using dg.twinning. Without this, you will not be able to use DoTwin. Then on start, we make the image invisible by setting DoFade to zero, in zero seconds, which means immediately. When the game is over, we use DoFade again, but this time the value is one, and the duration is two seconds. Observe also that the timescale is zero, so we must add the set update to true. Ok, let's summarize. The questions you should ask when you make animations with DoTwin are What is the component? What is the action? What is the value? And how long is the duration? And sometimes you also need to ask these two questions. Do I need any add-ons? Do we need to combine several simple animations into more complex ones using sequences? So, let us now go to Unity and do some hands-on. We are inside Unity. In our plugins, we have a folder called Demigiant and inside that folder we have our DoTwin asset. To get the do twin, you have to go to the asset store and purchase the do twin asset, which is a free asset. Then you have to import it. And once you have done so, you will get it downloaded in your project. In our hierarchy, we have a ball, game object, and we have a canvas. Go to game. And here is what we have. We have our ball and inside our canvas we have a number of buttons. Let's see what these buttons do. If I click on the move button, my ball is moved up in the y direction. If I click on restore, it goes back to the original state. If I click on fade, the ball fades out and restore. Move and rotate in parallel. The ball moves and rotates at the same time. Restore. Move and rotate in sequence. The ball moves and then it rotates. Restore. Move up and down. The ball moves up and down six times. Restore. Move and then change the image. It moves and then it changes the image. Restore and go back to our original image. Now let's look at the code for these animations. We'll start with move. What is the code for this? The component is transform, the action is do move y, the value is 250 and duration is 2 seconds. Restore. Fade. What is the code for this? The component is sprite renderer, the action is do fade, the value is 0 and the duration is 2 seconds. Restore. What is the code for restore? The first line is a movement to the position 0, 0 and that is done in 0 seconds. That is immediately. The next line fades to the value of 1 also in zero seconds. The next line rotates 
to 0, 0, 0 along all the three axes. And that is also done in 0 seconds. So the result is that we restore the values of our ball and we do it immediately. Let's look at move and rotate in parallel. What is the code for this? First we make a move to a certain position, 200 to 200, during two seconds. And at the same time, we do a rotation to the 180 along the z-axis, and we also do it in two seconds. These two animations are performed in parallel. Restore. Move and rotate in sequence. Move and rotate. What is the code? First we create a sequence. Then we append a move animation to it. And then we append a rotation animation to that. And the result is that we first perform this animation and then follow it with this animation. Restore. Move up and down. What is the code for this? We begin by making a move animation. Then we tell with a specifier that we want it to be a smooth movement. We use the set ease specifier for that. Then we add another specifier, set loops. The number of loops is 12 and the type is yo-yo which means that when we perform an animation, it will be followed by the reverse animation. Restore. Move and then change the image. Move and change the image. What is the code for this? First, we make a movement. And then we add a specifier, onComplete. OnComplete accepts a method name. So when this animation is done, it will call this method. And this method just changes the sprite of our ball. Restore and go back to our ball image. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching.